It's raining men, hallelujah. <laughs> What's up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah uh, yes, list day, and uh, Ryan's goblins over on the Discord are back at it again. I really want to do the next set, but they were insistent that we keep it fair on the channel. Last video was uh, about the top 10 waifus, so let's go over the top 10 husbandos. Am I saying that right? I don't even know. And for those who have commented on the last list, completely flabbergasted your favorite waifu was not on the list. Imagine thinking that these are serious videos. For those of us who are not a giant weeb, a husbando is the male equivalent of a waifu, so it's a fictional character that you want to marry that is a dude, I guess. That's, that's what I, I assume it means. I guess this is perfect for Pride Month, so let's go. <laughs> Number 10 is Warrior Digrapher. Ugh. I mean, I'm sure like everyone and their mother saw this one coming. And if Digrapher had his way, your mom would definitely see it coming. There is no surprise why the Discord picked this one as the number 10 husbando because uh, between the fetish gear he's wearing and the rippling muscles he has, he looks like a JoJo character. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> he's even got some hum on behind him. Or whatever that's supposed to be. There isn't much else to say about him except making jokes about he's got a very unsuccessful love life with, uh, what's her face, Dee Dee Warrior Lady, as depicted on the card Die Dance. As well as a really strange propensity for parodying, uh, the Terminator movies. He's a long storied history for Warrior Digrapha and as a 1700 Warrior beat stick, he's not the worst vanilla in the game. I don't know what's going on with that bowl cut though. Looks like my old license picture. Hey, so far so good. I actually got a good feeling about this list and being at a bunch of dudes, I don't feel so bad about making sexy jokes cause I'm a, I'm a dude. So next up is <laughs> Squirt Squid. Did we pick this one based on its name alone? I think so. Actually, no, it's also a squid and has tentacles, if that's your thing. Actually, I love this pick, not only because the joke writes itself, but also I just really like the card. It's one of the worst cards that came out like this year, or was it last year, whenever this came out? I don't remember, it's very recent. However, the effect of it, like when it's attacked, it just scooches over to an adjacent column and leaves a token, an ink token in its place. It's just fun. It just works how a squid would work. You spook the squid, it runs off and leaves a cloud of ink in its place. In this case, it's a token. That's fun card design. It's also terrible and it's bad. It's incredibly disrespectful. As a level two aqua water, you'd think, hey, you can play it in frogs. You could play it in frogs. You could play digrapher in frogs if you really wanted to. Doesn't mean you should, but yeah. Squirt squid. It'll make you squirt. There it is. Number eight is Dark Magician the Dragon Knight. Ooh. See, the controversial pick, cause like, this is the husbando that you think you need, you really, really want him, but he's really not the guy for you. Because he's really not what the deck wants. I had a video where I previously talked about this at length that uh, he is indeed an excellent card, but he doesn't fix the major source of the problem with that deck. Instead of just, basically he, increases the power ceiling, but not the consistency, and most decks that aren't tier one would rather have consistency than power ceiling because any deck worth its salt has plenty of power ceiling, because otherwise why would you ever want to play it? It must do something that's broke. It's just whether you can do it often or not is really the make or break for the deck. So uh, instead of being an Eye of Tamias searcher, he's an Eye of Tamias target, and that's just annoying. However, if you can get him on the field, he protects all your back row and becomes Dark Magician on the field and graveyard, so all your back row actually starts protecting him and he protects it. So, you know, it's this kind of codependent relationship. <laughs> Ooh, I'm talking myself out of this one. But like I said, he's a bad boy and he looks good on the surface and he's the one that he's the one that you want, but he might not be the guy that you need, you know what I mean? That's why he's not higher on the list. And number seven is, ah, um, Goblin Attack Force. 
uh, definitely on here because uh, the Discord is Ryan's personal army of goblins. However, I'm not sure anyone thought of the implications. I don't think goblins make very good husbandos. <laughs> It's a pretty big level 4 beater back in the day. It would out certain things. I really don't want to address the giant elephant in the room. Let's just go with the next one. And number 6 is... This is turning into top 10 most meme husbandos. I think someone's... I think someone's pulling a prank on Dave and Ader here. Evil hero Dark Gaia, my old nemesis. I guess he's a rock hard bad boy. And when he attacks, he turns all defense position monsters to attack position. And he gets the attack power of the stuff you made him with. So he can be potentially rather large. Upwards of like 7,000 attack power if you run a bunch of <laughs> like <laughs> mostly unsummonable garnets like Despondent and like Valkyron. However, uh, I guess you could make a really cheesy Magnet Warrior deck and then only Despondent is the brick. Oh, that's still not great. But you can make a Giant Beater who, uh, turns all your opponent's defense position monsters to attack. Obviously that effect's not super relevant anymore because half the monsters your opponent can have are Link monsters. However, from the Hisbondo angle, uh, he doesn't hit you face down, man. He flips you right over and, and makes meaningful eye contact as he plows into you. <laughs> so there's that. All right, top five, here we go. This is gonna be like nothing but beefcakes from here on out, I can feel it. The testosterone in the room is getting, getting palpable. Also, I don't have my AC on. So the heat's, the heat's there, t the heat's there too. Number five is, oh, Dampier Vampire of Sheridan. Vampires, you say? Does that mean it's time for a tangentially relevant JoJo reference again? His boot came off his foot! That boot saved him! If he only had on some other kind of footwear! <laughs> Next you'll say, hey Dave, stop screwing around and get back to the video. Sheridan is a rank 6 dark zombie Xe monster with the following effect. If you use a monster to Xe summon this thing that was owned by your opponent, its level counts as 6. So if you steal something from your opponent, it always counts as a 6 in order to make this thing, which is cool. He just kind of, he'll just kind of date anybody, even if it's not from your deck. He's easy. Once per turn, you can detach material from this card to target one card your opponent controls and send it to the graveyard. That's an omni non-destruction removal. That's actually pretty cool. It's not a quick effect, which is kind of lame, but hey, I mean, if you're just trying to get something off the board, like a Floodgate or an opponent's monster that's like, you know, immune to destruction or something like that, that's actually a pretty solid effect. Also, once per turn, if a monster is sent from the field to the graveyard by a card effect or is destroyed by battle, so including his own effect if you happen to use it on a monster, you can special summon that monster to your side of the field. So, like, he gets more of your opponent's guys onto your board so you can make more of him or whatever you want, Xe or Link or something. This is just cool because it kind of plays into the whole vampires and their thralls thing where if you kill something with a vampire then it comes back as like its slave. That's just, that's just neat. Good card design and it's honestly a, a solid boss monster for the vampire deck. It's weird that he's a six and not a five. I don't know why they did that. They should just made them all fives. Just pick a level, you know? But he is pretty solid. I do like him. Number four is Legendary Six Samurai Shien. Oh, okay, sure. You need a warrior tuner and a six sand monster to make him for this old school synchro monster. Once per turn, during either player's turn as a quick effect, if your opponent activates a spell or trap card, you can negate the activation of that card and if you do, destroy it. Also, if uh, he would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can destroy another six sand instead. So he's got an Omni Negate for spells and traps as well as destruction protection for himself as long as he's with one of his buddies. And at 2500 attack, he's, you know, kind of annoying to get over in battle anyway, so even if your opponent doesn't muster the resources without activating a spell, 
or I guess a trap, probably a spell, to, to you know, get over him, he can actually just protect himself. The cool thing about this bro is that uh, he's kind of an older synchro monster, but he does herald the things that are yet to come. As a uh, as an easily accessible boss monster from the extra deck that gives you free negates and some self protection as well as a decent beater, uh, this is pretty much the shtick of every deck now. And six Sam's were one of the first to really lean into it with like you know without, without like fusion summoning or something, just a, a, an inherent summon from the extra deck. Yeah, he's still a solid card, and uh, if you throw him in a board with other monsters, he's an extra layer of protection. He's a reliable husband. Husbando. Plus he has the Bushido Code, so he'll never dishonor you or your family. And if he does, he will commit seppuku. Ooh, number three is Alistair the Invoker. Alistair the Invoker might be one of the best boys in all of Yugi Mans. He's like a walking one card engine. He's really good. This card is normal summoned or flipped face up. You can add one invocation from your deck or graveyard to your hand. Invocation is the uh, the invoked fusion spell. Surgible by the field spell, magical meltdown, and then the field spell obviously surgible like metaverse and terraforming means uh, this, this engine just kind of daisy chains into itself so you pretty much are guaranteed a fusion summon as long as you get to Alistair. He also does have a quick effect where you can ditch him from your hand to give one of your fusions an extra 1,000 attack and defense, meaning you can kind of use him as a semi-fusion-based uh, honest. Uh, it's just another thing the card can do, so that's always good. And the engine recycles him too, so it's just like, it just, it just, it's super splashable. You can pretty much throw Invoke into anything you want to make a fun, you know, fusion option for your deck, and the fusion monsters you can make, like uh, Mechaba and things, are just actually good monsters. Like, but regardless, the, the fusion monsters are cool, and you can kind of just give their toolboxy effects to any deck you want, as long as you can find the room for him and his engine. So, you know, he's a solid, he's a solid husbando. Definitely, definitely. Ooh, Spiral Quick Fix is number two. You know, see, I thought they were gonna all be a bunch of beefcakes, but it's really nice to see a man of intelligence on here because, you know, that's just, that's important too. Not only that, but uh, ladies, he's not once per turn. The advantage just keeps coming and coming and coming. He's a machine. <laughs> and not only that, but uh, he's done enough hentai, so you clearly know that he, uh, he knows what he's doing in the bedroom. Hey. <gasps> What? You can do it again. Huh? I'm I'm not even gonna talk about the deck because this is way too much fun. He's definitely the right guy if you need your quick fix. Why was this so easy? All right, now it is time for some honorable mentions that I'm gonna just kind of pull out of my butt like I did last time. Uh, King of D or Lord of D because uh, obvious joke is obvious. Uh, Abram, I guess, because check this out. No, I think I think I remember reading in the lore he like tried to save his girlfriend or something. Uh, Ib, I don't, I don't know. And um, definitely Protag Coon himself, Alex Simo. <laughs> oh yeah, he's on here again. <laughs> hey Alex, how you been? You definitely know Alex's top tier husbando quality because uh, he stars in his own dating sim. I have been waiting so long to use this for something. <laughs> yes! I did it! And, uh, dishonorable mention, uh, hmm, worst husbando. There's gotta be some Yu-Gi-Oh card I can think of. Dio Brando. <laughs> yes! I did it! It comes in threes, baby! Comes in threes! Third JoJo reference to the video! Uh, if you guys want a real card, I don't know, little D, because... <laughs> <laughs> and the number one husbando in Yu-Gi-Oh is... Oh, see, this makes the last video make more sense. It's Beatrice the Eternal Lady. See, Dante is actually number one, and she's number one for the last list. It's a, it's a, it's a running gag now. Got it. She's basically a rank six quick effect version of Levolvel Chain, which is just really, really good. And if you're playing Burning Abyss, 
You can just slap her on top of Dante to see summoner instead of uh, instead of the the two level sixes, which is great because. <laughs> Not sure what level sixes you'd be making in a in a Burning Abyss deck. Uh, use Ritual Summon two of the Ritual Monster, or or Malakota and Virgil. Wow, that's a that's a lot of fluffing around <laughs> to summon her for real. But now she's uh she's really quite good. Being able to dump cards out of your deck is always fantastic. And you know what? She might be Husbando and Dante's definitely waifu because she likes to be on top. <laughs> she's on top of him. <laughs> Oh, era era, baby. I like sexually dominant women. Please step on me, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, that was the top 10 has Bondo list. Um, let me know in the comments below if you guys, you know, like this kind of just ludicrously silly stuff, because it's fun once to do one once in a while. It breaks it up. And uh, if you really enjoyed it, uh, check out the Patreon link. I would, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to get a new computer for the channel so I can actually start pumping out videos again because part of the reason why this is uh, uh, so sparse is that the editing process takes so long and is in no small part due to the fact that my computer is... It's having issues. Not only that, but uh, it would help the live stream stuff. So we're definitely going to look into upgrading the channel and some of my equipment. I'd like another mic stand, some real lights. These are just work lights from Walmart for Pete's sake. Like. That would that that always really helps out if you guys can do that, but I'm I'm I've never I never ever make you do that. And uh, if you actually want something for your money, always check out the T-shirt link, the Teesprings, because you know those are funny. We, as well as the Discord link if you guys want to get in on all these videos, and the Facebook or my Twitter if you guys just want to see me post random embarrassing weeb stuff, because it's pretty much all I use it for. <laughs> guys, leave in the comments below what you guys think. Remember, guys, if you don't troll, the better who will. I'll see you guys next time for the uh, the next set of the game, which I I don't even remember what it is. Wait just a moment. I can see you were about to click the subscribe button. Was I right? Tell me I was right. I was right, right? My Millennium Eye lets me see everything, including these other videos by Davy Boy. Don't be a stranger. You will always be welcome in my Toon World.